بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار verily all praise be to allah we praise him and seek his forgiveness we seek protection in allah from the evil of our own souls Whomsoever Allah guides, no one can misguide. Whomsoever Allah allows to go astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a slave and messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thereafter, listen to it. Allah tells us in the Quran, O you believe, fear Allah according to his right and die not but as Muslims. Thereafter, listen to it. That the best of the speech is that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and anything but that is an innovation and all innovations are misleading and all misleadings lead to hellfire. Brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, Allah honored us by giving us the blessing of saying La ilaha illallah. Allah honored us by giving us the opportunity to worshiping Him or to worship Him. Allah honored us to recognize His greatness. Allah honored us to understand that Allah is Haq. Islam is Haq. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Haq. And the message of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is Haq. And the companions and the Prophets of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that sent by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala are Haq. Is the truth. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala honored us after all of this understanding to see this beautiful and amazing month of Ramadan. Allah gave us the opportunity to recite His beautiful words. Allah gave us the opportunity to make sujood to Him, to prostrate to Him. Allah gave us the opportunity to raise our hands and make dua to Him and beg Him for His forgiveness and beg Him for His mercy and beg Him to give us Jannah and give us a place in Jannah to Firdaus. The question that we have to ask ourselves that what have I been able to do in the last 15 odd days? Have I been able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he deserves to be worshipped? Have I been able to recite the Quran the way I should have recited the Quran? Have I been able to make the sujood and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and cry out of shame for the sins that I have committed? Have I been able to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for any of those things? Allah tells us in the Quran clearly, and He says, وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ And they did not appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They did not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He was supposed to be worshipped. They did not appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way He was supposed to be worshipped or prayed to or made dua to. This is the question that I have to ask myself personally. Have I made that dua? Have I made that effort? Have I recited the Quran? Have I prayed? Have I done anything that will give me some kind of hope? That yes, inshallah, bithnillahi ta'ala, hopefully I'm on the right track. The answer generally, my brothers and sisters, is no. The answer generally is that I could have done more. I could have prayed more. I could have made an effort to recite more Quran, more azkar, forgiven other people, given more and more sadaqah. And the time becomes so fast or goes so away fastly that we, the, our end comes and then we die. And this is going to happen with each and every one of us. Allah honors me and you still with the remaining days of the month of Ramadan. And He gives me and you the opportunity to appreciate, to understand, to realize that this is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not given or granted that I am getting this opportunity from Allah to see the month of Ramadan. 
there is no good deed that I have done because of which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving me this opportunity. Allah is giving me and allowing me to see this month of Ramadan out of his mercy, out of his rahmah. And no, the hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لَخُلُوفٌ فَمِّ الصَّيَامِ That the smell that comes out of the mouth of a fasting person is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than the smell of the misk. And now I am not taking that or I am taking everything for granted as if I have been given Jannah. I have been given Jannah. My brothers and sisters, these are the shortcomings because of which we find ourselves to be in a situation where we are, our lives are distressed. We don't find peace at our heart. Our hearts are ضيق, are stricken. And Allah says in the Quran, that rarely do hearts find satisfaction in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we don't do this, we find ourselves to be constrained. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear in the Quran. If you're not going to remember me, if you're not going to appreciate, if you're not going to recognize, then we will make your life distressful. We will strengthen your life that you will find it difficult. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving me and you this opportunity. And while we go, there is my brothers and sisters. This life is a ma'arika. This life is a struggle. This life is a challenge. This life has been a challenge for each and every person that has lived or come on the face of this earth, especially those who believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We find this the case of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We find this in the case of the prophets that came before Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And mostly when we look at the life of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we see that in the month of Ramadan, on the 17th of Ramadan, the battle of Badr took place. The battle of Badr, where there were only 313 companions for Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who went forth in order to counter a caravan of Abu Sufyan who was not a Muslim at that very moment in order to get some support for the Muslims and later on they were faced or they faced an army which was triple the number of almost 1,000 people they did not go prepared they did not go ready they did not go to fight but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the victory Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the victory because they believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take the case of Hittin when Salah ad Ayubi went this battle also took place in the month of Ramadan. Take the case of Wadi al Qura. This battle where Abu Bakr who was sent, Abu Bakr or Zayd bin Harissa was sent in order to counter people who attacked the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This also took place in the month of Ramadan. The Andalus, the conquest of Andalus also took place in the month of Ramadan. The Fath Mecca, the conquest of Mecca also took place in the month of Ramadan. And then the battle of Ain Jalut also took place in the month of Ramadan. And I want to elaborate a little bit on this battle. Many a times we think, we believe, when we look around and we see what is happening in Palestine, we see that the Muslims are constantly being battered and killed and tortured. And it makes us think that what is this happening? Why is it the case that we are always being battered? As Allah says in the Quran to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the summary of the ayah being that they have sometimes victory and you will have sometimes victory it only happened to be the case that it has been just over a hundred years where the ottoman empire the sultanate the khilafah was demolished or destroyed and it will inshallah be the the case the muslims will rise again the muslims will have an upper hand you know why because allah says in the quran that you have the upper hand you why you have the upper hand because you are believers you are Muslims, you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives this commitment that anyone who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remains steadfast, amanu wa amilu salihati, believes in Allah and performs good actions and carries on standing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will give them victory. It may be that it is only temporary that you don't see it, but over a period of time you will get the victory. And this is what it is, my brothers and sisters, that this life is a ma'arika, is a challenge. There are people who came before us and they had challenges in their life. There are people who will come after us who will have challenges in their life. And Allah teaches us from the sayings of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, from the lives of the companions, from the lives of the prophets, that as long as you believe in Allah 
As long as you make an effort, as long as you stand for the truth, Allah will give you peace and tranquility in this dunya and the akhirah. But the condition is that you have to stand. You have to stand your ground. You have to speak for the truth. You have to initiate these discussions where you speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The case of Ain Jalut. Ain Jalut was a battle that took place in the month of Ramadan in 658. 658 this battle took place. Chengiz Khan, known as Chengiz Khan or Chengiz Khan, was one of the Mongolian emperors. And he sent one of his viceroys or representatives to the Muslims of Samarkand in order to build that relationship. The Muslims at that very moment became arrogant or one of them or some of them. And they in return killed the representative of the Mongolian emperor Chengiz Khan. Chengiz Khan later on asked the Muslims to make sure that they are being just. They take care of this situation. The Muslims in return rejected that proposal. Chengiz Khan being the Mongolian emperor, he could not accept that. He did not accept that. And he started this journey which basically annihilated, destroyed cities and countries and dynasties that the Muslims had. He started his journey and he took over the areas of Samarkand, of Bukhara. He killed masses and masses. He martyred Muslims. And Muslims were killed and Muslims were destroyed. That say cities were destroyed. He went on to take over the areas of Iran, of Afghanistan, of Iraq, of Palestine, of Syria, until he reached the areas of Egypt. During all of this time, when he, was, he passed by Iraq, and by this time he had passed away. So his children and grandchildren carried on with the onslaught for next 100 years. They killed the Muslims. They martyred the Muslims. They took away the universities, the madrasas, anything and everything that was there just because of the dishonesty of one, one group of people who basically did not uphold the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then what happened? When people lost hope, when people thought that this is the end of the time, when people thought that there is not going to be anyone who will come and save us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a nation race, and these were known as the Mamluks. And from the Mamluks, there was a general known as Qutus and Baybaras. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the insight, gave them the understanding, and gave them the courage to stand against this huge Mongolian army and stand for Islam. And these are the people who only were known as to be a very small group of people, small group of people, but they stood against the Mongolian army and over there they defeated them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the victory. And Allah tells us in the Quran that how many times has it happened that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given power and victory to a small army as compared to the big army. And that is the case with me and you, my brothers and sisters. When we look at all of this situation, where we see non-Muslims or people coming and planning against Islam and killing the Muslims left, right and center. We look at the hypocrisy of the media. When it comes to their own people, they would speak about it. But when it comes to Islam, they would show an imam that is doing the salah and the cat is holding up. But my brothers and sisters, we are part of the problem. We are part of the problem because we are not standing our ground. We are not worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he's supposed to be worshipped. And they did not appreciate Allah. They did not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he was supposed to be worshipped. And what happened with them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced them with the people who loved Allah more and Allah loved them. And that is the case with me and you my brothers. If I am not going to stand my ground, if I am not going to speak about Islam, if I'm not going to bring Islam in my life, may it be my brothers or sisters or children or whatever the case may be. And I'm going to carry on compromising my Islam, then it is only a matter of time when Allah takes away this deen from me. When Allah takes away this intellect of understanding that Allah is haq. Islam is haq. The truth is there. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need me. Allah does not need any of us. Allah does not need any of our worship. But Allah says, That I test you. I am going to test you. I am going to test you with everything that you have in this dunya. Why? 
so that those who are true, who truly believe in Allah, they become apparent while Allah knows about them. And those who don't, they become apparent. So my brothers and sisters, this life, when I am faced with a dilemma, that do I pray or I don't pray, let me make that effort that I recognize that I need to worship Allah. Although I'm not going to be able to worship Allah the way He deserves to be worshipped, but let me try. Let me take that step. When it comes to some compromise, may it be with family or someone else, let me look at what Allah tells me. Let me look at the life of Prophet If I'm finding it difficult to recite the Quran, let me look at my life. What is the reason that I'm finding it difficult to recite the Quran? As we know, the scholars mention that we, these are the sins that stop one from carrying out committing or performing good actions. If I'm finding it difficult to pray, to do Qiyamul Layl, to recite the Quran, to forgive others, then surely there is a mistake or there is a sin that I'm committing that is stopping me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may not be pleased with me. And for that I need to make tawbah. I need to make tawbah and sincere tawbah as what we have covered so many times. Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. Or oh, you believe, make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make a sincere tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And stand your ground, my brothers and sisters. And this is what happened. That when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought about this nation of mamalik, of mamluks, from them, the generals are known as the Qutus and Baybaras. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the victory. Allah gave them the victory and from the grandchildren of the Mongolian Emperor Chinggis Khan, people became Muslims and they were the ones who started to establish the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah brought from within them people who established Allah's deen subhanallah. وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهِ And they plan and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plans and Allah's plan is the best of the plan. So when we see the difficulty, when we see what is happening in Palestine, what can we do? We can speak about it. We can stand about it. We can discuss, we can look into the history and understand what the situation is and what can I do as an individual living in the Western society. Don't just stay quiet. Don't just say, not say anything. Speak about any injustice that takes place. May it be in this country or outside. <coughs> For this is something that is required by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from a Muslim. وأقول قولي هذا فاستغفروا الله لي ولكم واستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره قال الله تعالى إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم وسلي عليه Brothers and sisters Whenever someone passes away in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala It is our belief that we know That they've, they've passed away, they became martyred, they are only going to be under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's throne on the day of judgment when there will not be any other shade other than that shade. Anyone who passes away in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are known as shaheed, they are known as martyrs. So if anyone as we see that has passed away, then no need to be, have that remorse because their status has only been raised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the rahmah of Allah. This is the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors some people with martyrdom. And sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenges people like us or some other people with tests in their lives. But He gives them that good news. Remain steadfast. <coughs> I will test you. And I will test you with your life. I will test you with your wealth. I will test you with understanding. I will test you with your family. Stand your ground. Stay firm on Islam. For these tests will carry on until the day of judgment. I remember once there was a janazah. And subhanallah, we finished the janazah. And one of the mashaykh, he mentioned one of the reminders. 
And he said that this person who has passed away, may Allah have mercy on him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken away, taken him away from the trials of this dunya, from the tests of this dunya. And that will happen, my brothers and sisters, until we die. Until we die, it will be the struggle between me, between haq and batil. The question is that how much do I love Allah that I want to be with him, that I want to see him, that I want to not compromise on the principles that he has given me to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala reminds the Prophet on many occasions that when you look at these people, don't become amazed, don't become pleased by looking at what they have. And Allah says in the Quran about the people of Uhud, Min kum man yuridu dunya wa min kum man yuridu al-akhirah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that from you were the people who wanted this dunya and some of you wanted the akhirah. Why? Because the Prophet sallallahu told the companions, a group of archers to stand their ground and not leave their place. Yet they left and thinking that the Muslims have won the battle. And Allah says Allah forgave them. But Allah makes it clear that from you, some of you wanted this dunya and some of you wanted the akhirah. And this is the case with me and you, my brothers and sisters. Allah will open up this dunya if we want this dunya. If I want the richness of this dunya, if I want the ease of this dunya, if I want all the tranquilities and I want the cars and the clothes and the accommodation and anything and everything, Allah will give it to me. Umalahu. And I will not have anything in the Akhirah. Allah says it in the Quran. So this life, my brothers, is a challenge. is a trial for each and every one of us. All of us are going through some kind of difficulty or challenge in our life. It may be because of our shortcomings, or it may be that it is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In every matter, we need to make tawbah to Allah. We need to go back to Allah and we need to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as per the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Wallah, I ask you to keep my heart firm on your deen. Allahumma sarrif qalbi ala ta'atik. Wallah, I ask you to direct my heart in your obedience. This is the dua that needs to be made constantly. And we will find that when I will fully, willfully submit to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say in my heart that I truly believe in Allah and I don't care about this dunya, then you will see Allah will make it easy by giving us peace at heart. Because my focus would be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's only been 14 or 15 days of Ramadan, yet we see the masajid being empty. Talk about a football match and everyone would leave the masjid. Talk about a cricket match and everyone would leave the masjid. Talk about a gathering that you have to be there. You would leave the masjid. For what? For a temporary enjoyment. <laughs> Very this life is merely a time of enjoyment and, 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 and time waste. Ask ourselves, my brothers and sisters. Is that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worth? That I'm leaving the masjid, the taraweeh for something else? Have I become so weak that I am going to leave the taraweeh which is only maybe take, what, one hour or two hours? Am I so weak that I cannot listen to the recitation of the Quran? Am I so weak that I find it difficult Do I need to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while He gives me each and everything? When I don't ask Him for my eyes or my ears or my lips or my tongue or my brain, or anything that is within my body? Have I become so weak and despicable that I can't stand for Allah? The answer is no. Allah still loves me. And that's why He gives me the opportunity to come back to Him. And Allah says, Ya al insanu, ma gharraka bi rabbikal kareem. That, oh human being, what has happened to you? Where are you going? Where are you running away? Come back to me. And if my servant asks of me, عبادي, my servant, still I'm disobeying Allah and Allah is making me and saying to me, عبادي, my servant. He's not saying someone else. He's not saying you sinful person. He's not saying you who transgressed. عبادي, my servant. When my servant asks of me, Tell him, I am near to him. 
And that is the case, my brothers and sisters. Allah knows what I have in my heart at this very moment. The challenge that I am going through in my life, Allah knows. And Allah is the only one who will take us away from this difficulty. And Allah is the only one who will give success to the Muslims in this dunya. And Allah will give the success to the Muslims in Palestine. It may be that there are challenges. It may be that there are difficulties. But at the end of the day, the success and the victory will be for Muslims. The victory will be given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most high. And this is our belief, my brothers and sisters. That whenever we see a challenge, whenever we see a difficulty, let us not remain silent. Let us speak about it. Let us intellectually discuss it. Let us be part of that discourse where we challenge the narrative, where we challenge the discussion, for we don't have to fear anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the Allah has written something for me, a difficulty that I will go through in my life, then I will go through it. If I say something or I don't say something, then let it be the case that when Allah is the planner, the best of the planners and best of the providers and the best of the sustainers, that I don't compromise his Islam for anyone else. I use wisdom. As Allah says in the Quran, Call to way of Allah, to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with wisdom. I take that path, but I also make sure that I'm making an effort to stand for Islam and I'm also bringing Islam into my life, inshallah, bi ta'ala. There are only a few days remaining of this blessed month of Ramadan, brothers and sisters. If we have not been able to fully worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fully come to masjid and worship and recite the Quran and do the adhkar, we still have time for we are still alive. Let us make tawbah to Allah for the shortcomings that we have had. Let us make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah forgives our shortcomings and Allah forgives the people who have passed away. And Allah gives us the tawfiq to worship Him in the best possible manner. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lana kunanna min al khasirin. Allahum mansur al islama wal muslimina fi kulli makan. اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين في فلسطين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين في كل مكان وعز الإسلام والمسلمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين